Sometimes it out. Sometimes it just goes right with the message. I titled this one, Sharing the Good News. And that's what we're here for. Once we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's our main function, is to share his love and share his word with others that they might know who he is. See, without Christ, we have no hope. No hope at all. But thank God he declared us not guilty and offered us freedom from sin and the power to do his will and to share his witness with others. Let's go to the Father. Father, I know this message has a lot of different scriptures in different places. But I just pray that you'll bring it all together for all these folks like you did for me, Father. I pray that it'll strengthen our lives, maybe even change some lives. But Lord, that you'll be magnified and glorified through it. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I want to start by explaining Romans 3.34 which states being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Redemption refers to Jesus Christ setting sinners free from the slavery to sin. And to be justified freely means to be declared not guilty. Think about this. When a judge in a court of law declared the defendant not guilty, all the charges are removed from his record, legally as if the person had never even been accused. And when God forgives our sin, our record is wiped clean. It's as though we had never sinned. That's why I like to describe justified as just as if we'd never done it. All of it's completely gone. Nobody knows it anymore. God's not like us. When he forgives it, he forgets it and removes it, never to be remembered anymore. But Satan likes to keep trying to bring it up to us. And we just have to remind him, Christ has forgiven me for that. It's not on my record anymore. So I really like you to think about the whole human race being on death row and condemned to spend all eternity with Satan. We don't think about that enough, I don't believe. Some people think when they die, if they do go to hell, they're just going to burn up, and that's it. That's not what Scripture says. Scripture says they're going to burn for all eternity, wishing they could be dead. Amen. And that should open our eyes and our hearts a little stronger. And needless to say, we have the answer to their problem in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's the reason that we're supposed to witness, as stated in Acts 1, 8, one that we could probably all quote. But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses unto both Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Wherever we're at, people should be able to recognize that we're Christians. Not necessarily by our words because we don't get a chance to say something sometimes, but by our actions as well. It all is part of it. That's the reason that we're supposed to witness wherever we go. You might say this is too hard for you, or the, the fact that no one really wants to listen to your witness. Well, I've got some good news for you. In a recent survey, national survey, it was found that 85%, that's a high percentage, 85% of non-believers want to hear your story. I see them say cram the Bible down their throat. They want to hear your story. What happened in your life? So just what is your story? 
It's what your life was like before you met Jesus Christ. How you've come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And then what the difference is in your life now that you do know him. What does it amount to? What it's like now. And this witness shouldn't be drawn out. And I know people are busy nowadays, but it shouldn't take over 15 minutes. <laughs> also, we don't need to talk more about our past than our present or our future. Some people get so hung up on what their life used to be like that they forget about getting to the rest of it. And now some of you sitting there looking like, oh, that's too hard for me, I can't do that. Well, I'm going to tell you my story this morning so you can see how easy it is. And all of us have our story. I led a life of thinking, sin, thinking that I was having a really good time and a good life just like many other people. But the problem was I never felt really happy or satisfied. If you really get talking to sinners, you're going to find out deep down they're not satisfied and they're not happy. They go out and do all this partying and all this other stuff. But in the end, they know they're not really satisfied. Then one Sunday morning, I went to church with my father and stepmother. And the preacher talked about how we could live a truly good life and have the forgiveness and peace if we would just turn our lives over to Jesus Christ. Instead of being, me being responsible, let him be it. Give it to him. Let him tell me what to do. Well, I'm not a lot like a lot of people. I don't remember the date. I know where it happened and when. But I don't remember the date. But I can tell you that I prayed and asked forgiveness and asked Jesus to come into my heart and change my life. And he did it starting at that very moment. As for my life now, well, my spiritual walk was going very slowly. You know, some people just turn their life completely around. The rest of us, it takes most of our life to get where we want to be or as close to where we want. I was going very slowly until God placed Amy in my life to show me a love that I had never felt before in my entire life. And I learned what scripture meant when it said the two shall become one. It's amazing how many times husbands and wives can know what the other person's going to say before they ever ask a question. It taught me the meaning of Romans 15, 13. It says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the reasons that God gives us the Holy Spirit in our lives, to give us that peace. Then later on, he called me into the ministry at a cottage prayer meeting that we were having at our church prior to a revival. Then I went to Bible school, Bible college at the age of 47. After quitting high school at 16, going into service for 20 years, never really doing anything educational-wise, speaking much, was at 47, I went to college, got my GED. While I was in the service, as I always say, because people love it, you can imagine how hard that was for me. Amy graduated magnum cum laude. I graduated, thank you, Lolly. <laughs> we all caught that big <laughs> But he's given me the privilege of serving. And I loved it every minute, ever since. I still fall and falter sometimes. But I find that God's always there to bring me back to Christ. Also, it always amazes me to have so much peace even in times of trouble like we're going through right now with COVID-19. And that's because God, Holy Spirit, lives in me. I know that regardless of what happens, God's in control and he's got a purpose. This might be his way of drawing people together, teaching us how desperately we need one another and maybe give us the confidence we need to share when we have the opportunity we're almost messing over with. 
So to put it in simple form, you have to confess that you're a sinner and ask Jesus to forgive your sins, come into your heart, and change your life so that you can live according to his will and not yours anymore. Always put him number one priority instead of yourself. Then you have to have the faith to believe in your mind and heart that Jesus, in fact, can do this and live accordingly. Part of this is sharing your story with others so that you can they can have the same opportunity that you had. And if you have the opportunity ahead of time, pray for them. If you don't, make sure you pray for them afterwards. And pray that God will move in their hearts. And when you do this, then you're going to start finding a lot more of the peace of God that passes all understanding is going to keep your hearts and your minds through Christ. Philippians 4, 7. You're also not only going to learn to say, but believe. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, 13. We can if we give God the opportunity to use us and trust him for it. Then we come to Matthew chapter 28. Verses 18 to 20. Called the Great Commission. And I know most of you probably know it by heart. So I'm going to read it anyways. Just as a reminder for all of us. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, Listen to what he says. It's close. All. That's the word you need to get a hold of. All. Power is given unto me, not just in heaven, but in earth. That's the reason he's in control of what's happening right now. He has all power everywhere. And then he says, because of that, go ye therefore, as you are going, wherever you go, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Remember, baptism shows that we're dying to our old life and being raised in a new life with Christ. We have a new birth and a new chance. Teaching them to observe all, not some, not most, all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you, and here's that powerful word again, always, even unto the end of the world. Men. And that's his promise. But you'll find out that's not exactly true. It's just a reminder of the privilege that we have to tell others. And it does apply to us as believers. That's what it was written for, for us. And because of that, we need to realize the factors that are involved. The first factor is is witnessing has the authority of Jesus Christ. It's not our authority, it's his. And we have his word here in the Bible. Since Jesus Christ today has all authority, we can obey him without fear. And no matter where he leads us, no matter what the circumstances we might face, Jesus defeated all the enemies and won for himself all authority. He is the only authority that really matters. It's this authority that allows us to share his love for all people. He gives us that power to do it as well. The second factor is that witnessing is an activity. It's not just something we talk about. It's something that we do. No matter where we are, we should be witnesses for Jesus Christ and seek to win others as shown in Acts 11, 19-21. Now they which were scattered upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyrus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's not only to the Jews, but it's to the Greeks. To non-believers, to us, we weren't Jews. We were 
considered Greece, Grecians, lost them. Well, look what happened. <coughs> and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. How can anybody turn to the Lord if somebody doesn't tell them about it? That has to be us. That's our responsibility. That's our privilege. The third factor is that witnessing is also an ability. Some of us say we don't have it, but we do. God will give us anything we need when we need it, especially when we're praying now. See, Jesus is not only in the midst when his people gather together, but he's also present with them as they scatter throughout the world to witness, reminding us that no matter where we are, Christ is with us. He lives in each of us through the Holy Spirit. Had he remained on earth, Jesus could not have fulfilled that promise to be with us because he could only be in one place at a time. Now he's everywhere through the Holy Spirit. It was when the Holy Spirit came that Jesus could be with his people no matter where they were. Many of you know the name Dr. G. Campbell Morgan. He told of an experience in his life that involved this statement. He said early in his Christian life, Morgan used to visit several ladies once a week to teach the Bible to them. When he came to the end of Matthew's Gospel, Morgan read the words, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He had a statement. Isn't that a great promise? Isn't that what we'd say? Everybody agree? But one of the ladies spoke up right away and said, Young man, that isn't a promise. That's a fact. Maybe that'll wake us up and realize. We need to realize a lot of things aren't promises. They're facts. God's going to do what he said. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. We don't believe to let anybody try and change that for us. There's no conditions for us to meet to be able to witness or even believe for Jesus Christ is with us. Paul discovered this to be true when he was seeking to establish a church in a different city, in the difficult city of Corinth. Obeying this commission that we just read, Paul came to the city, as we see in Acts 18.1. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Obeying this commission, Paul won people to Christ and baptized them, as seen in Acts 18.8. And Cyprus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were saved and baptized. If they don't hear the word, they can't believe. Obeying this commission, Paul taught them the word as seen in Acts 18.11. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. And I think that might remind us that when we lead someone to the Lord, that's not the end. We need to teach them how to study the Word. We need to teach them how important it is to go to church, to hear the Word, and to fellowship with one another, to learn from one another, to lift one another up. All that's involved. Then when the going got tough, Paul had a special visit from the Lord as seen in Acts 18, 9, and 10. He said, then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by vision. He said, be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. Don't let people intimidate you. Don't be scared. For I am with thee. That should be enough right there by itself, because I'm with you. And no man shall sit on thee to hurt thee, for I have many people in this city. I don't think we realize how many other Christians are out there to help support us if we do what we're supposed to do. The phrase, the end of the age or the end of the world, indicates that our Lord has a plan because he is the Lord of history as well. 
as the churches follow his leading and obey his word, they fulfill his purposes in the world. It will all come to a climax one day, though. We need to remember that. But in the meantime, we need to be witness for him. We need to remind ourselves what we read in Romans 3.23 and 9 and 10. 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You'll never meet a person that's not a sinner. Everyone has committed sin. We're still sinners even after we're saved because we still sin sometimes being in this human body. Hopefully it's less all the time the closer we draw to the Lord. And in Romans 9, 10, 9 and 10, we find the cure. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. We have the words to give them. We just need to put it out there. It's their decision whether they accept or reject. But at least we can say we've given the opportunity. And I think you'll be surprised. You'll have more people say yes than you will know. It's just that we don't witness like we should. So the question for today is, are you sharing your story? Are you sharing your story and trusting the Lord to be with you as you witness for him? So you can give that same opportunity to others that you had to come to Jesus Christ and to spend all eternity with him in heaven rather than spending it in hell with Satan. If we don't tell our story, some people are never going to hear. Who's going to tell them if you don't? <clears throat> Who are you going to depend on? If you're not with us. Let's go to the Lord. Father, your word is so powerfully strong in teaching us that one of the joys and privileges and awesome responsibilities that we have once we become your child is to share your witness, to share your love, to encourage people, to teach people, to lift them up. That's the reason we pray for one another, Lord. But we need to also face-to-face -face encourage one another. Even when we meet a stranger, Lord, we need to have the courage that if you woo us, that we would share our witness. Keep it short. Keep it simple in plain language. Don't use all these fancy theological words that the lost person won't understand. But just strictly tell them what your life used to be like, how they got to come to you, and what great things you've done in their life since. How much better your life is now. And how much better it's going to get when you take them home. Oh, God, heaven is such a beautiful place. And to be with you and never even have the thought of sin in our minds again, that's all we need for all eternity. But we get so, so many more blessings, Lord. Help us to be brave and courageous and loving and share your witness the way you want us to. And we'll give you all the praise and glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 541. 541, Jesus calls us.
Father, as we leave this place today. I pray that we can say that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And Lord, I pray that you have spoken to each heart and each life. I pray that each person here might go home and just write out their story. And then read it over once in a while. So when the opportunity comes, they can be that witness for you. Pray for that boldness and whatever else might stand in their way. And be ready, Lord, if someone asks them, how do I get saved? Lord, let them have the privilege of leading someone to you once in a while. That you might be magnified and glorified through us. And if there's someone here, Lord, that doesn't know you today, we pray that they talk to someone and find out who you are and accept you as their Savior. We'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We thank you so much have your peace and we know that you're in control in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Have a great week.